my name is Maureen Busby and I'm the founder of PCOS Vitality. Uh, I set it up basically because it was born out of frustration really that there was a real lack of support and awareness for people with PCOS. I actually diagnosed myself by reading about my symptoms in a medical book in Waterstones. And the first time I went even to get the blood tests, I was told to come back again because Friday afternoon wasn't a good time for, um, for doing the tests. And I just, I came away, it had taken me a, a lot of courage to go in the first place. And I came away very disappointed and I felt dismissed. And I do wonder, was that just because it was a menstrual disorder or to do with women's health? So I eventually did get a diagnosis and that was US. But that was it. You were, I was told on a telephone call, yes, you have PCOS. I was given no information about it. And because of the nature of the, the name, you know, cysts, we often wonder, do you need them removed? Or, you know, I had a lot of questions and those questions were never addressed or answered. Um, so really I've had to always push for more answers and have to go back. And it's hard to do that too, when you aren't feeling well or you're in pain or you're having very heavy bleeding. And when I eventually did get um, an appointment with the gynecologist, he had been more focused on my weight primarily. Um, now, I did have the classic symptoms of PCOS, so I had hyperandrogenism, so I had um, excess hair on my body in places where it wouldn't normally be. I also had uh, an abdominal weight gain at that point, and I also had some acne, and I then was examined and I had cysts on the ovaries, but the, the sole focus was weight, and I hadn't really gained weight until the symptoms had started to show and then I was put on the pill and the pill just exacerbated weight gain. I developed um, pains in my legs and I was aware of there's a high risk of cardiovascular disease within my own family and there's a connection with it and PCOS so at least I knew I needed to get off the pill because it was risky for me but a lot of women aren't aware of this and it is very serious and I think because the whole disorder is just sort of looked upon as a reproductive disorder whereas now it is actually recognized more as a lifelong metabolic condition and I think this is where we're always focusing on it from a fertility point of view and this is where everything's going wrong um, because women are women first a mother second and I think we need to really step back and see what are we doing for the individual's health, you know, as well as, you know, future generations? Yes, it can be passed on, but it still doesn't help the people who are suffering now with the symptoms of the condition. So after the fat shaming at the gynecologist, then I disengaged with healthcare completely and just didn't go back. This is a huge issue within the PCOS community about weight. And, you know, you're told to eat less, move more and go on the pill. And I think a lot of women now, because there are more of us sort of my age, of my generation starting to speak out, that, you know, people are starting to say, well, we've been there and we've done all of that and it doesn't really work. There are international guidelines for PCOS and to my knowledge, they're not even being followed. Um, in general, we should be assessed for our you know, diabetes and even anxiety and depression. It, you should be screened for these things and in practice it doesn't appear to happen. Um, and that's really, really, I just think it's very dismissive. You know, we just don't seem to have um, been taken very seriously. Um, I, I'm very lucky now that I find a good endocrinologist, um, but because I find it hard to trust doctors as well now because at different times I've been told misinformation um, 
I mean, we was told it goes away at menopause. PCOS does not go away at menopause. I've also been told, you know, well, you might not have children, you know, but 30% of women with PCOS will have no problem conceiving. And I think that's important to have that hope if that's what you want. But we do have to recognize that not everyone wants to be a mother as well. So we have to look after, you know, everyone's health. After the fertile years, there's very little information about PCOS in, in relation to post rose productive life and health. And um, it's just, it's like, you don't matter anymore. You know, it's all again, focused too much on the fertility side of things and reproductive health. Whereas I think it should be a uh, you no know, more holistic um, pr approach to treating the disorder. The other thing that's still, I'm still shocked by, you know, like even maybe last week or so, a woman would say to me, what is PCOS anyway? I was just told I have it. And I'm thinking, you know, this is 2020. I, I, I just, I just, it's incredulous to me that this is still happening. Mm -hmm. And I do think it just, we're missing an opportunity to prevent serious illness. And I, I just don't understand it. I really don't, I don't understand why it's not, um, taken more seriously. My study focused on how we cope with PCOS at different stages of the menopausal transition and it found that um, women with PCOS are concerned with the menopause from earlier on than maybe people would think because it is a focus of the end of reproductive life. And because of the fact that we sometimes don't have periods um, because of um, or no ovulation as well, there are times when some women have thought that they might be in early menopause. And again, you know, no one can answer this for them about, you know, when is the menopause for you? And we all expect it to be different because our hormonal systems are working in a different way. So, you know, when do we know when? Um, to expect the menopause um, you know I mean I, I personally have asked about being in menopause and no one's been able to answer that for me um, and again the issues came up again in my study and it really was lack of information and confusion and that was in relation to the different advice that people were given so contradictory advice at times and um, again told that it's gone away and it hadn't of course um, so you know there's a lot of inaccurate information being given out to people um, the other thing that there was a bit of stigma in relation to weight and women described you know the feeling of being lost so then uh, and there's a tendency then to go then into trying to help yourself so people would use the internet a lot and then of course there are dangers involved with you know, using, you know, non-evidence-based, you know, advice. There are, there is a need to, perhaps for more education for GPs on mm -hmm. women's health, just, you know, in itself, um, you know, and like with other conditions as well. And I know there's a big push at the moment for education on menopause, but, you know, PCOS is lifelong, you know, to me, you know, why is it not being prioritised? And it's actually a public health issue as well in terms of the, you know, diabetes and obesity now. There is a problem, I think, between getting, translating the research into practice. Today, I really manage, I try to manage my weight. I do pay a big attention to that. Um, it is difficult. But I sort of come to accept that I'm not going to be a normal BMI. It's just not something, it's not a goal that is achievable for me. I have accepted that. And I think even a lot of times, you know, we are set unobtainable goals <laughs> with regards to weight. And um, so, you know, finding some sort of self acceptance is, is a good thing, a positive thing for your mental health. I also, I exercise a lot. I would exercise every day. I do um, walking a lot, walking I find is great. And I just, I try to manage stress a lot more now um, to try and minimize it because it has a negative effect. And just having good support, you know, your family and friends and 
um, also the support of the others within the PCOS community. There's a crowd of us now have been helping each other for years and it's it's good to have you know someone to turn to and talk to about it that really understands it. I've had laser hair removal that was one of the the key things I think that really helped me especially with your body image. I think my advice is to um, to not give up when you get a doctor that doesn't seem to understand or know. I think I just, I, I call it the revolving door of PCOS. You know, you go in and you tell them all your history and you, if you get anywhere, that's great. Go back and see them. But if not, just go back. I just, you know, I just, I just came to a stage in life where I just thought, right, well, they don't know. It's not my fault. I'm going back. So I just kept going to different doctors until I eventually get what I needed to try out. Um, and I think that's the thing, you know, you do, just, everyone deserves good health care. And I think because of the weight issues that a lot of women with PCOS feel they're to blame for the disease. And you're not, I mean, you didn't cause this. It's, it's mostly, you know, there are a lot of factors involved, but a lot of it is down to genetics. Um, and I would always say to people, you know, um, you know, get in touch with us and look at our website and we have lots of free information for you, but realize that it's not your own fault and that you should seek help early and don't take no for an answer. And, you know, don't give up on yourself. You deserve the very best of healthcare.